Hello, my name's Ren, and today is UMG Day. What we're going to be doing is creating a health bar, which is interactable by objects in the world. We're going to create two actors, a healing object and a damage object. This is then going to update on the user interface, our health bar, at the top of our screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a healing object and a damaging object from the sprite sheet. So if we right click our sprite sheet and create another sprite, we'll call that the healing sprite. And we'll create another sprite called the damage sprite. Inside these sprites, we'll edit the source regions to be the green and red gems. Inside the edit render geometry, we can see that this is drawing some of the other areas. So what we'll do is we'll edit the render geometry, taking off the grid snap, and move these along. Now we're only rendering the red gem. So we'll save that. If we edit the collision, make sure that's the same. And we'll do the same with the healing sprite. So we'll edit the source region. And then we'll double check the edit render geometry and the collision again, and they're fine. So we'll close those. Now that we have these two, we'll want to be creating a new actor for them. So what we're going to do for this actor is we're going to use one actor, and we're going to change the sprite inside the editor and the health amount. So we'll be able to add health and remove health and change the sprite that's rendered, just using one object, and this is called modular design. So we'll be able to create lots of actors from one actor. So if we create a new blueprint of type actor, and we'll call it our health editor. We'll double click that. First thing we want to do is create that root scene component. And we know that it's going to need box collision. Now this box collision is what's going to be interacting with our player, so we want it to overlap all the dynamic objects and make sure that the player is overlapping with this object. The next thing we want is the sprite that we're going to render. So we'll take a paper sprite and inside the source sprite, we'll set it to default to be the damage sprite. So now we can see that from the front viewport, we want to make sure that this is zero in the world and that our collision is also encroaching only on the object. So now that our collision is set up, let's set up the box collision in the events panel on the right hand side on the on component begin overlap event or add a new event. So when this gets overlapped, we want to again cast to make sure that we're touching our new player. And then when we do that, we want to call a function on the player to edit his health. So to do that, we'll need to create the function inside our character. So if we open up our character and create a new function on the left hand side called change health. And we'll have an input here called amount. We'll make that a float. And we'll have to have two variables inside our player, one for his maximum health and one for his current health. And these both want to be floats as well. Now this will be the number that we edit and show inside our progress bar when we create our user interface element. So if we compile, we'll be able to set our maximum health to any value we want. I'm going to use 100. And on event begin play, we also want the health to be equal to maximum health. So as soon as this character spawns in, his current health is going to be set to the maximum health that we dictated, which is 100. And inside the change health function, if we double click that in the amount, we're going to be setting current health to be equal to whatever the health was at this new amount. And to debug this, what we're going to want to print a string of the current health. So we'll save that, and back in our health editor, we'll be able to call change health. So the amount wants to be editable within the editor. So what we can do on the left hand side is create a new variable for health amount. We want that to be a float. And if we make this editable, we'll be able to change this in the editor. So we'll drag that into the amount here. And another thing that we want to do is change the sprite. So we'll create a variable for my sprite. And we'll make that a paper sprite. If we save that, on the event begin play, what we want to do is drag our paper sprite from our hierarchy on the left hand side and set its current sprite to be equal to the sprite that we tell it to be. So this also wants to be editable and we can just click this little eye here. Now when the game begins, 
the sprite that we're rendering is going to display the new sprite. And when we interact with this sprite, we'll be changing the health on the player. And if we double click that, we'll go straight to that function within our new character. And what we're doing is we're going to print the string of what the health currently is. So if we go to the map again, go to our blueprints, drag our health editor in. We want to make sure that it's zero in the world again. We want to set it up on the tile grid and turn snapping on so that we can snap it around our world. We want the health amount for the red pickup to be minus 10 and we'll set our sprite to the damage sprite. And then if we control C, control V, drag this along, we'll set this one's health to plus 10. We'll give this the healing sprite. Now what you'll notice is that the sprite hasn't changed and that's because we haven't pressed play. Now on begin play, you'll see that the sprite has changed. To do this inside the editor straight away, we edit the blueprint and go to our function begin play. If we copy this and go to our construction script, we can put this in here and what this construction script does is every time that the editor is updated by dragging the object for example, this function will get called which means that the sprite will change. So now if we go back, we'll see the sprite there and it's changed. One of the things we'll also notice is that the image has moved. Now this is to do with our tile sheet. So if we go back to our healing sprite and our damage sprite, we'll notice that we have a pivot mode. If we set this to bottom center, we'll see that the pivot point for this sprite is now at the bottom. So we'll save that, and we'll do the same thing to our healing sprite. We'll set it to the bottom center. We can see that this is slightly off center for this. So one of the things that we want to make sure is that our edit source region is correct. If we click on view, we'll see that our pivot point is in the same place. So if we go back to our health editor object again, because we haven't selected a sprite in the defaults and the construction script is running, we're not seeing the sprite. So we'll select that there. We'll move the origin of this again to make sure that it's equal to the bottom of the world. And we'll save that. We'll go back to our map and we'll see that these are set up now. So if we press play and interact with these, we'll see the debug log on the top left telling us what our health is. So every time I walk over these, you'll see that the debug is happening on the top left. One of the things that we can also do is move this sprite slightly back in its world so that it's not overlapping the player sprite in the 2D viewport. This will stop it from blinking like we saw previously. So one of the things that we also want to do when we overlap this object is to destroy it from the world. So you'll see the health number on the left changing. So the next section of this tutorial is going to be about setting up the user interface. So I've created a UMG folder here and by right clicking I'm going to go to user interface and create a widget. A widget blueprint is a user interface element that we can display on screen through the HUD controller. So we'll call this our health bar. Inside this health bar we have a region here which can be the full size of the screen or it can be customized to be the size that we want it. We're going to be controlling it ourselves and setting the width to 400 and, and the height to 50. You'll see on the left hand side that you have all the types of elements that you can drag into this user interface. Common items are items such as text and progress bars. We can drag these in and edit them how we wish. You'll see them pop up down on the left hand side underneath hierarchy. We can also use text input boxes. We can have new panels which can be switched between such as this widget switcher, which we can edit inside the graph to show different panels underneath that widget. What we're going to be using is a progress bar. So if we drag that progress bar down, you'll see it's displaying just there. And on the right hand side, we can see these anchors. Now I want to anchor this to the full size that I've dictated. So if I do that, you'll see that there's two offsets just underneath there. If we set those to zero, it'll fill the entire area. You have a percentage on a progress bar that goes from zero to one and this is going to show our health. Because it's our health, we're also going to change the color to green. One of the things that we can do is bind this to a new function. So we're going to do that, and on the left hand side we'll see that underneath our functions, and we'll call this set health. Every single frame, this function is going to get called on that progress bar, and it's going to change the health e equal to the player's health. In order to get that player's health, in the construction for this blueprint, we need to find the player and set a variable for him. So the first thing we want to do is create a new variable for the player. And this needs to be of the type our new player. 
Most blueprints have access to get player pawn. Now this works in single player games, but because of that player index, which is equal to zero, in a single player game, that would just be us. In a multiplayer game, this could be any number, so we'd have to do different coding for that. But for a single player game, we're just going to cast off of this to make sure it's our new character. Now that we've cast that, we can set the player to be equal to this object. Back in our set health function, if we grab that player, we can get his health, current health, and set the progress bar to it. But because this is a value up to 100, and this health bar relays 0 to 1 value, we need to divide this to make it a 0 to 1 value. If we take the current health and divide it by the maximum health, we'll get a percentage of the health in relation to its max. So that creates us a percentage value. We plug that into the health there. The last thing to do is to make sure that this health bar is getting shown in our game. So inside our game mode folder, we're going to need to create a new HUD class. So if we create a new blueprint of a type HUD underneath all classes, if we create that and call it our first HUD, our game mode is able to tell us which HUD class to start with. So we'll select our first HUD and save that. Inside this new HUD class, we're going to be drawing our new widget. So if we create a function for create health bar, what we can do is use a create widget function. We can select a class from this to be equal to our health bar. Once we've got our health bar, we're going to need to set a few things for every element that we ever draw to the screen. Now these are alignment, the size and the position. So the first thing we're going to do is set the alignment. And what the alignment does is it dictates where the element is going to be drawn from. So if you want to draw it from the center of the element, you can use 0.5 and 0.5 as a percentage of that element. If you use 1 on the X for example, it will draw this element from the far right hand side and midway down on the Y axis. We're going to draw it from the center. The next thing we want to do is set the size in the viewport. So we know that this element was 400 units in the X and 50 in the Y. And the last thing we need to do is set the position. You'll see this remove DPI scale button. Now if we use this, we'll be able to use the viewport size as is. If we remove the DPI scale, we'll need to divide viewport size by the scale of the screen that's being rendered. Now this is used when you have a windowed game view. But for this example, we're going to remove the DPI scaling and just draw it straight to the screen. If we right click on position and split that pin, we'll see the X and Y values. Now we know that the position on the Y needs to be 100 units down from the top of the screen. So if we set this to 100, we'll be rendering our widget 100 units down in the Y axis. If we were to split the viewport size and use just that Y axis, we'd draw it at the full height of the screen, which means it will be drawing at the very bottom. And we know that 0 is the very top. So we'll be rendering it at 100 on the Y axis. For the X axis, we, we want to display this widget at 1 half of the width. So we'll divide that by 2 and draw it. The very last thing we need to do to actually draw a widget to the screen is add it to the viewport. You can also set up the order in which this widget is being drawn. So if you wanted this health bar to be behind something else that you have on your screen, you'd set this to 0 and the next element to be drawn on top, one layer above it on the first layer. If we save this and go to our event graph, we'll be calling create health bar as soon as the game begins. If we go back to our editor and we'll duplicate a couple of these objects, we'll be able to see our health bar changing as we interact with them. That's everything you need to know to create basic user interface objects within Unreal Engine, adding them to the viewport and editing them using modular assets. In the next session, we're going to be looking at animating objects within our world, such as platforms and pickups. So thanks very much guys, go make some awesome UMG assets and we'll see you in the next one.